While likely not a direct hit on Hawaii, Hurricane Lane is approaching the islands with strong wind and flooding. Investigators in the Molly Tibbetts case confirmed the remains are of the missing college student and that her injuries were sharp force trauma. As we learn, the man charged in Tibbetts' death is an illegal immigrant and we look at the e-verify system that could have caught his status and how Iowa doesn't require companies to use it. Now, from your 24-hour news source, this is the KCRG TV9 News at Midday. Well, after rain and some rumbles of thunder this morning, we are watching the threat for severe weather this evening. That includes the risk for wind, hail, and even the potential for tornadoes. That's why we are starting out with meteorologist Gust Justin Gertz with your forecast. And Justin, the threat of storms is already affecting high school football games. We just learned moments ago the Friday Night Lights game on live KCRG 9.2. Cedar Rapids Xavier at Iowa City Regina has been moved up from 7.30 to 5. And we're trying to beat these storms now. Yeah, a lot of schools are starting to move that. And we're hitting the storm chance a bit higher than we normally would because of high school football. That includes that severe weather potential. It's a level one risk. Now, not every Everybody gets in on this. In fact, uh, we can hope that there isn't any severe weather, but because the potential is there and because so many people are going to be uh, outdoors this evening, we do want to hit this potential uh, harder than typical. So if we do have strong to severe thunderstorms, looks like gusty winds, hail, maybe even a few tornadoes would be the main things to watch for. I would say south of Interstate 80 has a locally higher risk than other places. In any case, we'll see an updated risk from the Storm Prediction Center during this newscast sometime around the 1130 time frame. Now, right now, been point up the radar does have uh, just a scattered shower a thunderstorm out in central Iowa. This is not our next event. This is just one of those little isolated things that's still passing on by. We'll come in tight on this though. You see it's past I-35. It's heading to the northeast and it's going to be affecting the Waterloo area and Waverly uh, over the next couple of hours. So centered around the lunch hour as this lifts off to the north and east. Some lightning is associated with this as well. Here's lightning tracker over the past hour. You'll do notice that there is some lightning with this, but this is not a severe thunderstorm. Our main focus is again going to be on this evening's potential. Right now, temperatures have really not moved a whole lot as we see readings that are mainly in the 60s right now under a mainly cloudy sky. For your Friday Night Lights kickoff forecast, we're going to split the difference to a 6 p.m. time frame here. Some are starting a little bit earlier, some a bit later. Uh, we should see temperatures mainly in the 70s with some scattered thunderstorms across the area. I'll have the full view of Pinpoint Futurecast to pin down the hours in just a little bit. Alicia? Thanks a lot, Justin. And if you are headed out tonight, make sure you download the KCRG TV9 First Alert Weather app. You can keep an eye on live radar and get alerts specific to your exact location before severe weather hits. And now we're going to look at a live picture. Hawaii is bracing for a much different type of severe weather. Hurricane Lane is already starting to be felt there. Here is a live picture of Diamond Head Beach in Honolulu. You can see the effects of the wind and rain and the angry waves. The good news, the storm is weakening. The National Weather Service downgraded it to a Category 2 storm. But ABC's Gio Benitez reports people on the island are bracing for the worst. The rain has been unforgiving. In some parts of Hawaii, it's coming in buckets, creating flooding, and in some cases, mudslides on the Big Island. This gas station swamped with floodwaters, too much for this car. And watch as these residents are rescued from their home through the rushing waters. Please heed the warnings. It's very dangerous uh, to be outside, uh, particularly in areas that we know are flood, uh, have imminent flooding occurring or are getting ready to flood. Some residents still looking to stock up on the essentials, finding long lines in empty shelves at the supermarkets. It's a gamble with what's coming, and I'm just going to be prepared for the, the worst. A drone shot these pictures, water rising to the tops of trees, turning a soccer field into a lake. We are scared. We are concerned about the storm. And for some of the 300,000 tourists in Hawaii, shelters are their only refuge. We were very afraid of the storm, and in France we, we don't have storm like that, so we decided not to stay near uh, the beach and to, to go to the shelter. Forecasters are warning of tropical storm force winds this weekend with this thing tracking towards Maui tonight and on to Kauai by Saturday evening. Zachary Kish, ABC News, New York. Meteorologist Justin Gertz for the latest track on Hurricane Lane.
the arrest of an illegal immigrant. All right, Hurricane Lane, currently, as you heard, is a Category 2 hurricane, has sustained winds of 110 miles per hour as it is moving off toward the north at about 5 miles per hour. Now, just because the winds have backed off doesn't mean it poses less of a risk. In fact, as this keeps on moving slowly past the Hawaiian Islands, it's going to be interacting with the high terrain, so looks like heavy rain and some landslides are a possibility should be curving back off toward the west as we go into the weekend and then weaken into a tropical storm. But the next couple of days are going to be crucial over the next little while for that area as there is going to be that risk of that heavy rain in those areas. And again, mudslides are going to be a concern, especially on some of the larger islands. Alicia? Justin. And the arrest of an illegal immigrant in the murder of Molly Tibbetts is putting a new focus on how Iowa businesses hire workers. We now know Molly Tibbetts was stabbed to death. The state medical examiner says the 20-year-old University of Iowa student died of multiple sharp force injuries, but did not speculate what caused those wounds. Further examination could reveal additional injuries. Molly disappeared while jogging in her hometown of Brooklyn on July 18th. Molly Tibbetts' funeral will be this Sunday in Brooklyn. It'll be at 2 p.m. in the gymnasium at BGM High School. 24-year-old Christian Rivera is charged with first-degree murder in Molly's death. He had been living and working in Molly's hometown of Brooklyn for three years, despite being an illegal immigrant. And there is a federal e-verify system that might have caught Rivera's status earlier. The farm where he worked never used it to check his identity. And Hannah Hilliard explains that's because e-verify is not required in Iowa. Behind bars and accused of killing Molly Tibbetts, all eyes are on Christian Rivera and his immigration status. And it's prompting Iowa lawmakers to take a closer look at the federal verification program called E-Verify. It's set up to do away with some of the fraud that we do know happens when people fill out the I-9 forms and use false documents to show that they're uh, eligible to work. E-Verify confirms the identity and employment eligibility of newly hired employees. Rivera's employer, Yarabee Farm, says they did check his out-of-state ID and other documents that turned out to be false. They did not, however, use E-Verify. But in Iowa, they don't have to. I have introduced it every year since 2012, every session, uh, and I so, certainly will do it again. Republican Iowa Senator Julian Garrett wants to require employees to use E-Verify, but has always failed to gain enough support for the legislation. But Democratic Iowa Representative John Forbes says he'd consider the mandate. If we look at our systems and we see uh, glitches and problems, I think we need to take a second look at it and legislation may be necessary next year, possibly. An issue both lawmakers expect to be on the agenda come 2019. I'm sure uh, with what's happened in the last 48 hours, I think we'll see some type of legislation and a lot more discussion on this topic. We're supposed to be looking out for our constituents and our, our citizens, and uh, we ought to be fixing that problem. Garrett says the resistance in the past is because E-Verify is a known for those outside of the business industry. Forbes says it does come with a cost for employers, too. Breaking news this midday, Senator John McCain's family says he will stop medical treatment for his brain cancer. The 81-year-old Arizona senator has been away from the Capitol since December to deal with a brain tumor. In a statement, McCain's family says he has surpassed expectations for his survival, but that the disease and his age left little options. The family also thanks supporters for the outpouring of kindness and concern since his diagnosis. And 30,000 people are expected to make their way to downtown Cedar Rapids for the annual Market After Dark tomorrow night. The more than 100 vendors will be in downtown Cedar Rapids, and there will be lots of food and plenty of performances. The open container policy starts at 6.30. That means those who are 21 and over can get a wristband and grab a drink as they walk around the downtown area. The Cedar Rapids Metro Economic Alliance tells us safety is always a top priority when they're planning Market After Dark. As we've done for the past several years, worked with uh, the Cedar Rapids Police Department and first responders to have all plans in place. There'll be plenty of police presence at Market After Dark, and we're hoping for a very safe and enjoyable free event for everyone. Market After Dark begins tomorrow night at 6.30 p.m. right in downtown Cedar Rapids. And with the fall sports season here for young athletes, many injuries aren't just from overuse. This also includes athletes who don't use the proper form at times, leading to more stress injuries. 
southern Iowa finally got a nice soaking rain. In fact, some places of the southern part of the state had one, two plus inches of rain. Welcome sight. There are more storms on the way on a scattered basis. Pinpoint feature cast is coming up right after this. Stay with us here on KCRG TV 9. You're watching your 24 hour news source, KCRG TV 9 with Chris Earle and meteorologist Justin Gertz. This is KCRG TV 9 News at Midday. Hearing loss, you're actually losing the ability to understand words. Hearing aids can't overcome what the brain has lost. Don't miss another special memory. Sign up for your free hearing screening at iowahearing.com slash screening today. Adventure Bay is still open weekends through September 3rd, along with all of Adventureland Park's rides, shows, and attractions, including The Monster. Fun for the whole family, and it's all included with your admission to Adventureland. Come on over to Adventureland. You're gonna love it at Adventureland. A bathroom isn't just a place to get ready for the day. It's a place to relax or take care of someone you love. Now, make it your favorite room with Rebath, America's most experienced remodel specialist. Rebath does complete remodels, tub and shower updates, even aging and accessibility solutions to the highest quality standards. Call Rebath for a free in-home design consultation today. Call 319-423-8360 and save $350 on a tub or shower remodel. It's the biggest sale of the year at Lemon the Mattress Factory. Summer clearance, pillow tops, memory foam mattresses, latex hybrids, even adjustable beds. Get special summer clearance prices on nearly everything in the store. Queen pillow tops starting at only $2.99. Or get an incredible price on Lemon as a stereo pillow plush. A two-sided flippable mattress now only $4.99 with a free box spring, free local delivery, free setup, and a free bed frame. Don't miss the biggest sale of the year at Lemon the Mattress Factory. When I went into Yonkers in 1985, Iowa was in the midst of a farm crisis. We kept as many people employed as possible because we knew the importance of every hour worked to help people make ends meet and to have a quality of life. We expanded Yonkers employment by over a thousand people over that four or five year time frame. Yeah, we closed a couple of stores, but we opened some more stores too. When you're running a business or you're running the state, your job is to make the hard decisions so that the most people get the most benefit. And that's what I want to do with the state. When you have cardiac disease or a change in that vascular system, it can cause constriction in the vessels that go to the inner ear. That's a big reason to have your hearing evaluated. Concept is here today, so you can hear tomorrow. Visit us on the web today. Live high school football all season long on KCRG 9.2. KCRG 9.2 brings the action straight to your living room with interviews live from the sidelines with coaches and play-by-play -play commentating from local experts. Never miss a play with Friday Night Lights live on KCRG 9.2. Sponsored by Walm Repair and Collision Center, Dr. Fitzgerald and Associates, Eels and Tronvold Law Offices, Community First Credit Union, and Worth It by UFG Insurance. Now, your first alert forecast from meteorologist Justin Gertz. While we may have an isolated shower or a couple of thunderstorms during the afternoon, main attention is going to be coming up this evening, especially after about 6 p.m. By about midnight and points thereafter, things are going to be quickly winding down, but there's several hour window that there is the potential for some severe thunderstorms. Latest outlook from the Storm Prediction Center was just, just put out about two minutes ago. It's essentially unchanged from earlier on. You see most of the TV9 viewing area is under that level one risk. Now this is all very conditional on how many breaks in the clouds can happen. If all of Iowa stays completely overcast throughout the day, severe weather potential comes down somewhat. However, even an hour or two of some peaks of sun in southern Iowa would be enough to allow for this potential to perhaps come with us. So main threats are going to be some gusty winds and hail. Could be a couple of tornadoes, mainly in areas south of Interstate 80. It's not to say the risk is zero north of there, but if I had to highlight one area that has a somewhat higher potential, it would be south of Interstate 80, let's say south and west of the Iowa City area in particular. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we're highlighting this potential more than we typically would because there are going to be so many folks who are out today and especially this evening. So if you're going to any football games coming up this evening and you may be fine, but for those who do get thunderstorms, there's the saying when thunder roars, go indoors. If you can hear thunder 
or see lightning, that lightning is close enough to strike. Now, if it's a general thunderstorm, really inside your car is a pretty safe place to be. But if a warning is issued, you'll need to move inside of a sturdy building. Now, if you have the first alert weather app, you can even get lightning alerts on there. If you're not sure if you're set up for that, just go to our KCRG weather uh, Facebook page or our Twitter account, and you'll be able to see a video that shows you how to make sure your lightning alerts are turned on on the KCRG first alert weather app. Again, most of the afternoon, things are fairly quiet around here. Might be a spotty shower, perhaps a rumble of thunder. We'll pause here at 4 p.m., still pretty uneventful. Once we get to about 6 o'clock or so, 6, 7 o'clock, we should start to see some scattered thunderstorms develop in central Iowa, and those move off toward the east, and you'll notice the brighter uh, colors for storms are happening generally south of Interstate 80. That's where the higher chance of some of that severe potential is. Farther to the north, some general thunderstorms may be what we end up having. In any case, here's 8 p.m. Some of those football games are going to be affected. Some of you are going to be just fine, but I honestly, I can't tell you which storms are going to be or which games are going to be stormy and which aren't. By the time we hit midnight, a lot of this is pushing off toward the south and east. We'll see some lingering clouds tomorrow morning, but I would expect a generally partly cloudy sky throughout the day on Saturday. It'll be a nice looking day, but humid and somewhat warm. Let's take a look at your first alert zone cast for today. As those scattered thunderstorms redevelop, it'll be pretty late in our northeast zone with high temperatures mainly in the lower 70s. We're pretty cloudy here. In our northwest zone, we see high temperatures in the lower to middle 70s. Scattered thunderstorms again redevelop mainly later on. There'll be a time for about an hour or so in the early afternoon. You have an isolated shower or storm pass on by 76 today. Cedar Rapids scattered thunderstorms redevelop mainly after about 7 o'clock. As we roll off toward the south, we're in the upper 70s. Better chance of a couple of breaks in the clouds here, especially closer to Sigourney and North English. Otherwise, looks like again after 6 or 7 o'clock, we have that risk of thunderstorms developing. They'll be scattered in nature. Tomorrow, partly cloudy and humid. Highs around 87. Looks like on Sunday, a few scattered thunderstorms are a possibility. Highs were around 86. That front lifts off to the north on Monday, so it looks like our northern viewing area has a somewhat better chance compared to elsewhere on Monday. Even so, those are going to be few and far between. It'll be breezy at times, upper 80s. That front comes back south on Tuesday. Then behind it, we have slightly cooler air for a few days with highs back in the 70s. Again, though, if you are heading out to those football games this evening, just stay weather aware. We can hope that everything will be completely fine where you are, but just in case you'll be ready and in case you do need to uh, go inside for a while, you'll be all set for that. Thanks a lot, Justin. And the rain has already moved tonight's kickoff of Friday Night Lights. Already, Cedar Rapids Xavier will play Iowa City Regina. The game was supposed to start at 730. It's been moved up to five to try to beat the storms. You can catch the action live on KCRG 9.2. And be sure to catch all the highlights tonight on Friday Night Lights and zone after the KCRG TV 9 news at 10. And the start of the fall sports also means the risk of injuries for those student athletes. High school athletes account for 2 million injuries each year. Kim Hutcherson explains the risk in today's Health Minute. An overuse injury is any kind of muscle or joint injury that's caused by a repeated trauma. They can be caused by training errors or technique errors, and they're on the rise among young people. Overuse injuries are subtle, usually occur over time, and can be difficult to treat. The rising number of injuries among young athletes can be linked to several factors, including competitiveness, expanding numbers of travel teams, enthusiastic parents pushing their children too hard, and the fact that young athletes are specializing in one sport at an earlier age. A study conducted at Loyola University found that specializing in a single sport was one of the strongest harbingers of a sports injury. Experts say kids that get these sorts of injuries are also more likely to burn out and give up on that sport altogether. They advise parents and kids to focus on the fun and teamwork of the sport and not worry about winning or securing scholarships. They recommend getting kids involved in a variety of sports. And make sure to go to the doctor immediately if your little player is experiencing any discomfort or pain. For today's Health Minute, I'm Kim Hutcherson. Still to come, fried chicken is easy to find, but perfecting it when cooking requires a few extra steps, as our expert from Diamond Joe will show us. But first, the Agribusiness Report. Welcome, I'm David Geiger. I'm here at a wet market in Guangzhou, China, where Chinese citizens buy fresh vegetables and meat products. It's part of a growing middle class that wants more food to meet a growing income. Traditionally, we like fresh food. 
Yeah, in the old days, we, we, we still have uh, live chicken in the wet market as well, but for the sanity thing, we can't do that now. So actually people like to have fresh product, especially for the seafood. In a farm broadcaster trip to China, Rachel Dung with the U.S. Meat Export Federation guides us through a wet market in the southeast port city of Guangzhou. Live seafood is on display and slaughtered at stands picked out by customers shopping for dinner. You can say maybe every uh, community have uh, one wet market nearby, yes. Usually walking distance. It's a traditional method of getting food for the Chinese who still prefer to buy daily groceries. Take my mom as example, she would go to the wet market to buy uh, maybe buy, buy meat and veggie for dinner, yes. Every day. <laughs> The fish, at least, is as fresh as possible. Several stands let customers touch and point out the fish they want. The vendors chop, gut, and package the fish in a matter of moments. Other food options include turtles, frogs, or even snakes. Even with all this available, Dung says it's not quite a farmer's market. It's a little bit different because the farm, the, our wet market opens every day, so the consumers can come to buy their daily food such as meat, vegetables and fruit. Also, many of the small merchants here are not farmers. They buy their products from the wholesale market. However, the trend of wet markets is changing. A new generation of urbanized families are preferring to move to better preserved foods and have the income to buy in bulk. At the Olay supermarket tucked inside of a mall, groceries are bought almost exactly the way they are in the U.S. I think it's traditional, but for younger people, they would like to choose uh, frozen product or chill product because uh, we know that for frozen meat and the chill meat, it's actually uh, more cleaner, maybe and the sanity is much better, right? More options and packaged foods means less time spent in a store or on a bus. And here, Deng says they are trying to persuade Chinese to buy American-made food. The importers will just, and the distributors will just buy directly from the exporters, and then they sell directly to the Olay supermarket. And what USMEF do is uh, we will just help them to just uh, promote. It's part of helping Chinese grocery stores better market U.S. products. They have trainings, seminars, pamphlets all to inform Chinese customers about American meat. A popular way to showcase American products are free samples. For Chinese people, they don't, they don't know much about U.S. beef, U.S. pork. If we just give them to taste, they know that, wow, the quality is really good and that it really helps the, helps the sales. Consistency is key. Dung adds with support, supermarkets like Olay will give away samples every weekend. And that's all I have for the show today. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you again next time. We post videos every day in the agriculture section of KCRG.com. I'm David Geiger with the Agribusiness Report. Iowa is the nation's leader in corn, soybeans, eggs, pork, and ethanol. As nearly a third of Iowa's employment and more than a quarter of the state's economy, every Iowan depends on agriculture. That's why Agribusiness Association of Iowa members are committed to making Iowa a leader now and for generations to come. AAI, progressive ag that grows Iowa. The 10th rendition of Fry Fest, a celebration of all that is Hawkeye, presented by Midwest One Bank, takes place in Coralville's Iowa River Landing on Friday, August 31st. A street renaming, an honorary statue, and Guinness Book of World Records have all preceded this 10th year. Members of Hayden's 1983 coaching staff and a concert performance headlined by the Port Tornadoes will highlight this year's Fry Fest. Visit FryFest.com for details. The Little Red Hen Quilt Shop is proud to be named a Better Homes and Gardens Quilt Sampler 2015 Top 10 Quilt Shop. Located in Muscatine, Iowa, the Little Red Hen has everything you need for your next quilting project. We have a spacious showroom holding over 5,000 bolts of fabric and a wide selection of hand-dyed wool. There are patterns and kits for everything, including Little Red Hen original books and patterns. We also have cross-stitch, hand embroidery, and punch needle supplies. Come in and see what we have to offer. The Little Red Hen is a hidden treasure that's worth to find. Thank you. Now, Charlie, 
There's a heating and air technician coming over, so no barking. Come on, I can't even say hello. This company's the leader of the pack. No pun intended. Uh-huh. No pun taken. They always send the nicest, friendliest technicians. I really feel like I can trust them. Ah, uh, good human. You called Master Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. We're Master Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Let's call Master Plumbing. The following KCRG TV9 Show You Care event is sponsored by University of Iowa Community Credit Union. Now is the time for you to help the Haycap Food Reservoir fill its pantry. The Eastern Iowa Freedom from Hunger Food Drive is going on now through August 25th to supply food to our neighbors through 126 partner agencies. For more details, visit kcrg.com care. I'm Jeff Disteroff with the UICCU. Please show your care and support this event. The Midday Cooking Expert on KCRG TV 9, sponsored by Diamond Joe Casino. Welcome to the Diamond Joe Casino. I'm Executive Chef Jonathan Nelson. Fried chicken is all the rage. It's in all the restaurants. It's all in all the magazines. I'm going to show you a couple secrets that all these cookbooks out there don't show you. So the first secret to my fried chicken is egg whites. So we need to crack a few eggs and get rid of those yolks. We're going to whisk up these egg whites. I'm going to drop my fryer chickens in here and I'm going to soak them for about 15 minutes. So after 15 minutes, I'm going to remove our chicken and I'm just going to toss it in a lightly seasoned flour. Any seasoning blend will work. It's the eggs is what makes this delicious. So my other secret to great fried chicken is I create a seasoning blend for the outside. So what I have here is a little white sugar, some garlic powder, a little smoked ground chilies, some salt, and I have some beautiful toasted coriander. So after about 12 minutes, our chicken is done. Like I said, my other secret is to season the outside of the chicken with a little of a rub mixture. So the next time you decide to do fried chicken at home, remember my two secrets. Soak it in egg whites, season the outside. Your guests will be impressed, I promise. Since thousands came out for the first market after dark in downtown Cedar Rapids, this event has turned into a signature for the unofficial end of summer in downtown Cedar Rapids. Three days after the discovery of Molly Tibbetts' body, a look at how the case has kept a national following far beyond Brooklyn and the state of Iowa. We had some local downpours earlier on today. In fact, Iowa City officially more than an inch of rain. Could be some more local downpours amidst that potential for severe weather this evening. Your latest first alert forecast is coming up. Stay with us here on KCRG TV 9. Diamond Joe Casino is giving away $25,000 cash to one lucky winner to spend as they wish. Earn entries now to qualify for the grand prize drawing on September 2nd. The reason I always accept a job babysitting for the Penningtons isn't because the kids are super cute, even though they are or because they super stock the fridge, even though they do. It's because they have extreme, so everything here actually works. Like Miller's, Davison's, get it together. Switch to extreme today and get high speed internet with Wi-Fi, TV and phone for as low as $24.99 each a month for a year when bundled. No contract required. Call 844-EXTREME2. They are some of the hottest videos on social media. Those videos claiming to instantly get rid of bags under your eyes. Well, today we're going to see one for ourselves and let you be the judge. It's called Plexiderm, and lifestyle expert Annette Figueroa is here to tell us why she says 
this one is for real. This one is for real, and I'm so excited. We even have a video that the viewers can watch while you and I talk, and you'll notice the model has bags underneath his eyes and some sagging, and all he uses is a small amount, and that's how easy it is. All right, what's the active ingredient? Okay, so it's silicates that are minerals found in shale rock, and what it does is it tightens and lifts the appearance of bags underneath your eyes in as little as 10 minutes, no prescriptions, and very little effort. And I did this to my father. We were at home and we were screaming four minutes, 34 seconds, completely gone. My real true opinion is holy words I can't say on camera. <laughs> These lines bother me, they really do. And this is absolutely unbelievable. I mean, I could feel it just lifting my skin. It feels great, looks even better. Hi guys, my name is Sandy Marinesi. I'm a professional hair and makeup artist. And one of the number one question that I always get in my chair is, can you make me look younger? So we had a few people that we applied it to and some of them at first I was like, oh, I don't know if this is gonna work. And I was so impressed how fast and how well it really worked. Now I could really say to people, yes, I can make you look younger. And not only does it work on the bags, it works on the appearance of crow's feet, fine lines, and wrinkles. So it targets all those problem areas. So this would be a daily thing or just when you want to like get rid of the bags? And yeah, you would it absolutely could be a daily thing. You have high school reunions, you have events you want to go to, you want to look years younger, this is it. Plexiderm has a special offer for you. Right now, you can get Plexiderm for up to 50% off, plus get free shipping. Order yours at Plexiderm.com or call the number on your screen. On the same day investigators confirmed a body found Tuesday is that of Molly Tibbetts, people gather in Waterloo to remember young lives lost with unanswered questions. The death of Molly Tibbetts while she was on a run is also renewing concerns about staying safe while exercising outside. Plus police at Iowa State hold four people in custody after four call about someone firing guns in Ames. No. From your 24-hour news source, this is the KCRG TV9 News at Midday. Let's start off with your forecast. Joining us now is meteorologist Justin Gertz. And we've seen storms and rain this morning, but Justin, you're really focused on what's still to come. Yeah, it looks like this evening, mainly after about 6 o'clock, is going to be the main window of opportunity for some additional scattered thunderstorms, some of which may be on the strong to severe side. Now, uh, Storm Prediction Center outlook is basically unchanged from earlier. You see most of the TV9 viewing area is under that level 1 risk of severe weather. Now, this is still conditional on how things evolve throughout the afternoon. If we can get through this without any severe storms, we can all breathe a sigh of relief. That said, even if there are general thunderstorms, non-severe ones this evening, that's still going to be a risk for those football games because lightning is still a safety concern. Now, if we do have severe weather, gusty winds, hail, the main things are what we're watching for. Could even be a few tornadoes if things come together just right. Area favored for the severe weather is going to be a bit in those areas south of Interstate 80 in particular. Right now we're seeing a general lull in the activity. That said, there are a couple of general thunderstorms happening in our northwestern zone, mainly west of Waterloo at this point. We'll come in and pinpoint some of these. As, uh, north of Grundy Center, we have that downpour coming on by near Charles City as well. You're about to have a thunderstorm rumble on through. This is going to be uh, moving through over about the lunch hour for most of these areas. Should not be a significant issue for us. And this is a loop over the past hour. You'll notice it's moving along fairly quickly. Iowa City, we have a cloudy sky right now, but as we move into uh, the afternoon. There should be enough brightness coming through that to, even despite not having a lot of breaks in those clouds will probably warm up enough to get some of that energy going. Right now we have temperatures that are still locked in the 60s, but there is enough mugginess to get those storms going. Football games this evening may be affected by those thunderstorms. Same story with the Colonels who are back home this evening. First pitch has 74 degrees, seventh inning 72. Scattered thunderstorms are a possibility. Not everybody gets thunderstorms this evening, but because we can't tell you exactly who's going to get them and who won't, you'll just need to be weather aware just in case your location has them. Alicia? Thanks, Justin. And the family of Molly Tibbetts is preparing to say goodbye to their daughter. A month after she went for a jog, investigators found the body of the 20-year-old University of Iowa student this week. Prosecutors say an illegal immigrant who had been working in her hometown grabbed her and killed her. ABC's Alex Perez explains what we're still learning about the tragic case.
here in Brooklyn, Iowa, where you can see it is a somber, rainy day today. Molly Tibbetts would have been wrapping up her first week back at the University of Iowa, but instead her family is now preparing for her funeral coming up this Sunday. Now we're learning more about Molly's last moments. The medical examiner releasing a preliminary autopsy report, and according to that report, Molly died from sharp force injuries, indicating she was likely stabbed to death. Now, the suspect, 24-year-old Christian Rivera, the judge ordered he be held on a $5 million cash bond. He has not entered a plea just yet. We're also learning that the suspect's girlfriend and Molly actually attended the same high school. There are yearbook pictures that they are both in, but investigators are telling me that in a small town like this one, where a lot of people go to the same high school, that is actually not unusual. Investigators say they have no reason to believe the suspect's girlfriend and Molly actually knew each other. Investigators uh, now saying they are not revealing any details about a motive in this case just yet as it makes its way through the legal system. The suspect is expected to be back in court August 31st. That's the latest from Brooklyn, Iowa. I'm Alex Perez for ABC News. A vigil in Waterloo last night honored Molly Tibbetts and children who died too soon. Drew Collins was there. His daughter Elizabeth and her cousin Lyric Cook were last seen riding their bikes in Evansdale in 2012. Hunters found their bodies in Bremer County. Five months later, to this day, no one has been arrested. Collins hopes events like this support families of those children but also keep the search for justice alive. Um, we're always looking for that one lead that's going to bring our case to a close. The vigil also remembered Jake Wilson, the 16-year-old who vanished on April 7th after he left his house to walk to Wolf Creek in LaPorte City. Investigators found remains in the creek last week. DNA test results will determine if the remains are Jake. People came out to support 14-year-old Caden Essling, who died on June 28th. A driver hit him while he was riding his moped in Fayette County and then left the scene. So far, police have not found the driver. Molly Tibbetts' funeral will be this Sunday in Brooklyn. It'll be at 2 p.m. in the gymnasium at BGM High School. The Mount Pleasant man found guilty of killing his wife at, that disappeared in 2000 gets a life sentence in prison. Michael Cyperta heard the sentence on Thursday earlier this, earlier this year. A judge convicted Cyperta in the death of his wife, Elizabeth. She was last seen in 2000, but this was a cold case until 2017 when a grand jury looked at evidence in the case. Elizabeth Cyperta was 22 when she was last seen. Her body has never been found. Reports of armed people caused a scare on Iowa State's campus. Students received notices of four armed suspects shooting near a building on the north end of campus last night. University police found one man carrying several BB guns. They questioned three others later. The four do not face charges, but they could face punishment from the university since all weapons are banned from campus. A new app will let teachers respond and alert others to emergencies. Des Moines paid $9,000 for the Alert Us software. It will alert staff and public safety of emergencies and severe weather. The Des Moines district says calling 911 is still the preferred option, but this app is another layer. Cedar Rapids schools say they are testing out a similar system and hope to roll it out next month. The move comes following a new Iowa law requiring schools to create emergency plans to respond to threats like an active shooter or tornado. The start of the new school year means the start of the KCRG TV9 Student of the Month. We need you to help us find and honor the best and brightest in Eastern Iowa. Go to kcrg.com slash student of the month to nominate a student. They can be in any grade. Just tell us how they excel in the classroom or outside of it. And a spat between President Trump and Attorney General Jeff Sessions played out in public. It comes as the president is facing increase, increasing scrutiny for his handling of alleged affairs during the 2016 campaign. ABC's Kenneth Moten details what we're learning about efforts Trump made to hide negative news stories. Today, President Trump is intensifying the attacks on his Attorney General Jeff Sessions. Tweeting this morning, the AG should be investigating Hillary Clinton and former FBI Director James Comey. Quote, come on, Jeff, you can do it. The country is waiting. Jeff Sessions, 
never took control of the Justice Department. I said, what kind of a man is this? After this Fox News interview, Sessions fired back saying, I took control of the Department of Justice the day I was sworn in. While I am Attorney General, the actions of the Department of Justice will not be improperly influenced by political considerations. The two men came face to face at the White House yesterday, but sources say their very public feud never came up. The back and forth heated up as we learned tabloid king and Trump ally David Pecker was granted immunity by federal prosecutors. A source telling ABC News Pecker, publisher of the National Enquirer, agreed to give up information about the president and his former personal attorney Michael Cohen to help with the criminal investigation into potential campaign finance violations. According to court documents, Cohen and Pecker coordinated on silencing adult film star Stormy Daniels and Playboy playmate Karen McDougal. Both claimed they had sexual affairs with the president years before he ran for office. The documents also alleged the two hatched a plan in 2015 to catch and kill negative stories about Trump. During the 2016 run, the National Enquirer writing positive stories about Trump while trashing his opponents. ABC News has learned Trump Organization CFO Alan Weisselberg was also granted immunity in the Cohen case. Weisselberg is one of President Trump's longest serving employees. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, Washington. As hundreds of thousands of tourists are in Hawaii at any one time, most were not planning on surviving a hurricane. This includes a couple from eastern Iowa that is staying on Maui and being told to fill up their bathtub. If you have, if you have a question for our Master Gardener today, send us an email midday at kcrg.com and we'll try to get it on. Weather system moving across the Midwest brings with it another round of scattered showers and thunderstorms coming up this evening. Then for the weekend, we have more storm chances. It will be humid as well. Your first color forecast is coming up right after this. You're watching your 24-hour news source, KCRG TV9, with Chris Earle and meteorologist Justin Gertz. This is KCRG TV9 News at Midday. It's one billion. Why call anyone else? It's great getting 11% off of everything at Menards, especially when we're tackling a big project like updating our living room. We're saving on all of it, from the stone veneer fireplace to the area rug. You can get it all at Menards, and the 11% savings keeps us coming back. We saved over $300 on our living room and can't wait to start our next project. Your next project starts right now with 11% off everything at Menards. Save big money at Menards. What do you do with old jewelry, coins, and precious metals you don't want anymore? Well, you could try selling it yourself, or you could save yourself a ton of hassle and get more for all of it by seeing the trusted team at All-American Bullion and Coins. Straightforward pricing, experienced appraisals, and the attention to detail only a military vet can provide mean you'll walk away happy. Come see All-American Bullion and Coins at the corner of 1st Avenue and 7th Street Southeast in Cedar Rapids. We are the fast, easy, trusted place to sell and buy coins, jewelry, and unwanted precious metals. <laughs> Click or call your local Culligan dealer to give your people Culligan water. It's Mattress Firm's biggest Labor Day event ever. Save up to $1,000 store-wide with every size, every comfort on sale. And right now, get a free adjustable base on almost every Sealy mattress. Or buy a king for the price of a queen, or a queen for the price of a twin. Experience Tempur-Pedic and save $550. Or get a free adjustable base upgrade on select Tempur-Pedic mattresses. Plus six years interest-free financing. Save money, sleep happy tonight. Night. Mattress Firm's amazing Labor Day sale starts now. Ah. What is he doing? He's finding the acoustic sweet spot. Ah. Next Big Bang. Tonight at 6.30 on KCRG TV 9. Hello, hi. My name is Will. Want me to go through? I am single. Uh, He's single, we're single. <laughs> no, I've never been that single. Yeah. Single Parents, a new so comedy premiere okay. Tuesday, September 26th on ABC. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. We're celebrating our 20th year in business. Found it at the Amanas. Satisfied customers. Yeah. Cleaning out your gutters three, four times a year. 
What the are you a gardener? Many people injured or killed on ladders each year. You cannot afford to clean out okay. your gutters. Okay. Okay. We have the answer. Okay. It's okay. Oxmesh leaf protection. Sure. Oxmesh is a fine I'm, um, stainless steel mesh. I'm here this morning and happy to be here. It keeps out the smallest debris, even shingle grit. Give us a call at 364-5724 or check us out on the web at alleasterniowagutter.com. The Lynn County Isaac Walton League is currently welcoming new memberships. The Isaac Walton League is offering a free tour of their eight ranges this Saturday at 7.55 a.m. See where you can shoot pistols, rifles, shotguns, and archery. Visit IsaacWalton.info for more information. Now, your first alert forecast from meteorologist Justin Gertz. Severe weather outlook does keep uh, much of eastern Iowa in that level one risk. Looks like gusty winds, hail, and perhaps a few tornadoes are all possible if all the ingredients come together just right. Now, this would be on a scattered basis. Not everybody is going to be seeing thunderstorms, let alone severe weather, but that potential is there for much of the area. So let's break down each of those risks and see who has a slightly higher chance compared to elsewhere. As far as the damaging wind goes, that would be favoring areas mainly south of Interstate 80. Now, that doesn't mean areas north have no risk, but if there's one area that's a bit more more likely it would be in southern Iowa. As far as the large hail risk, that pretty much encompasses all of the uh, level one risk. And then as far as the tornado risk, pretty much the same story. Uh, here too, if I had to pick out a spot, it would be south of Interstate 80, but uh, odds are looking relatively low. Showed this earlier, but I want to reiterate it. For those of you who are going to be out and about this evening, for example, for those high school football games, when thunder roars, go indoors. If it's a general thunderstorm, inside your car is actually a pretty safe place from lightning. Just make sure those windows are up. You're not touching anything metal. Otherwise, a sturdy building like the school is a good place. And if you can hear thunder, lightning is close enough to strike. And if uh, the referees say it's time to end the game or at least delay it and you need to get out, Listen to them. They uh, are looking out for everybody's safety. Now, if a warning is issued, you do want to move inside of a sturdy building. If there are uh, areas of large hail or strong winds, a vehicle would not be a very safe place to be in that circumstance. Now, as far as how things look right now, we have a couple of isolated thunderstorms near uh, Waterloo and points to the north and west. These are non-severe, not concerned about these at all. We'll come in close to the one in Grundy County. This is uh, just uh, near and south of Parkersburg right now, right along 14. This is moving to the north and east. Quick downpour, some lightning with that. It'll be passing near or north of the Waterloo area here in the first part of the lunch hour. The pinpoint future cast shows that isolated shower may be a thunderstorm throughout the afternoon. Most of us don't have much going on other than a mostly cloudy sky. We should see some breaks in the clouds in south central Iowa this afternoon. So even if it doesn't happen here, storms should be developing off to our west, especially close to 6 p.m. Those push off toward the east and you'll notice southern Iowa is being highlighted for that higher chance of some of the strong thunderstorms here on pinpoint future cast even north though even if it's just a general thunderstorm with lightning we still have to bear in mind that that is a safety concern for us once we hit midnight or so a lot of that pushes out of the area we'll see some lingering clouds throughout a good share of the night then for saturday we'll plan for a partly cloudy sky humid and it'll be a warmer day as well as far as your first alert zone cast for today, we'll see high temperatures in the northeast in the lower 70s, mainly cloudy with some scattered thunderstorms uh, developing late. In our northwest zone, early afternoon shower or thunderstorm, most of the activity gets going late. So winds are out of the south at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Scattered thunderstorms late tonight in our central, rather, rather late this evening in our central zone. Highs stay in the mid-70s. And in the south, where we might see a few peaks of sunshine, we're aiming for some upper 70s with scattered thunderstorms, mainly after about 6 or 7 o'clock. Tomorrow, partly cloudy, 87. There may be a few showers and thunderstorms on Sunday with highs around 86. Better chance on Monday is in the northern reaches of the TV9 viewing area. Then that front comes back south on Tuesday, so we all have the potential on that day. Any of those could produce some local downpours as well, so do bear that in mind. Middle of next week looks quiet, partly cloudy skies with highs in the upper 70s. If there is any severe weather this evening, we'll be here in the TV9 Weather Lab to let folks know. And make sure you have that KCRG First Alert Weather app. It does not just severe weather warnings, but lightning alerts too. And if you're not sure if you're set up for that, just head to the KCRG Weather Facebook page. I have a video on there that explains how you can check that in your settings. Thanks a lot, Justin. You bet. And Hurricane Lane is already starting to hit the Hawaiian Islands. The Category 2 storm will lash the islands with heavy rain, wind and waves throughout the weekend, prompting fears of flash flooding and other damage. An Eastern Iowa couple on vacation in Hawaii is riding out the hurricane. Brad Canfield said they never expected a hurricane might hit during their trip. So far, they have not been told to evacuate, but hotel staff told them to be ready for the worst case. They put notes in our rooms that said they want us to fill the bathtubs full of water 
And uh, so we have that in case you need to, you know, flush toilets, do things like that. My wife watches the weather quite a bit and we knew that it was out there, but we didn't think it was going to be affecting us. Canfield said shops and restaurants were already closing as early as yesterday to be ready, as they were expecting high winds of up to 20 inches of, and up to 20 inches of rain. The performers are, uh, performances are in place for Aretha Franklin's funeral, plus a horror movie about the housing crisis 10 years ago takes a look at tough financial times. ABC's Jason Nathanson has today's showbiz wrap. We know we the Queen of Soul is going to get a star-studded, song-filled send-off at her memorial a week from Friday. On the list to perform, her friend and collaborator Stevie Wonder, Jennifer Hudson, who is supposed to play Franklin in an upcoming movie, Shaka Khan, Faith Hill, and more. The service in Detroit is for family, friends, and invited guests only. Hey, handsome. You looking for some rotten cotton? I'm a woman. At the box office this weekend, Melissa McCarthy and her band of foul-mouthed puppets are looking to unseat the current champ, Crazy Rich Asians. McCarthy's R-rated Happy Time Murders isn't tracking well, maybe around $15 million for the hardcore puppet party from Jim Henson's son, Brian. What about us taking an adventure east? Like Queens? That means Crazy Rich Asians might repeat at number one. Also opening, Axel. It's your standard boy meets robotic dog story. It may not break five million. What do they teach a seminar to you guys? Just had a lot of people. In Danny McBride's dark horror comedy thriller, Arizona, he stars as a guy pushed to the brink during the housing crisis in 2009 with Rosemary DeWitt witness to his breakdown. She tells me she was thrilled to get to do a lot of crazy action scenes. And then the reality of it is, you see why, like, the Rockets paid the big bucks. You know, it's like you're crawling through a drainage ditch at 5 in the morning in a bra and high heel boots, and you're like, this sucks. Arizona is out today in limited release. And birthday's Friday. Actor and comedian Dave Chappelle turns 45, while a Wrinkle in Time director, Ava DuVernay, turns 46. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. And as we're approaching the end of August, Master Gardener Jane Shildroth is here. Two questions that we have. Um, one of them is about a zucchini, so please bear with me. I know I'm not, I don't have the green thumb. I'm not a zucchini expert. But, you know, with rain on, on Monday, a creek flooded um, one of our viewers' uh, zucchini beds. Can we eat zucchini after a flood? Is it safe to eat? Ooh, that's a really good question. Um, I think because it's a health safety issue, I would contact the Extension Office and ask that question. They should just call a Lynn County Extension. Um, someone there will be able to tell them. That's, that's a very good question. I think I'd err on the side of caution. Err on the side of the caution. That's, that's a good one. And, um, you know, how do I treat a peony with powdery mildew? Um, probably the first thing, and, and I was going to mention this, this is the time you should cut the peonies down so they're about six inches above the ground, four to six inches above the ground. And when you discard that foliage, put it in the garbage and not into the yardy. We don't want to spread that all around the city to our neighbors. So just be really careful with what you do with the foliage. It should come out of it okay. I've had it before and it should be fine. And it, we're no stranger to rain right now. We've been getting a lot of it. I know you came in and it was raining, but with all this rain, when is it a good idea to fertilize the lawn? Well, it's getting to be time to do it. Um, it's, lawns are getting ready to be refurbished right now. So, you know, you may want to spend some time when it's a little bit drier to rake it up and, you know, rough up the edges that you want to um, maybe reseed and to treat, maybe put on some compost. Uh, reseed, all those things, it's, it's time. The fall is really the optimum time to do that. That's perfect. Thanks again for joining us. We oh, appreciate sure. it. And that was Jane Shildroth. Again, if, if you have a question, um, feel free to go ahead and send those questions. Um, our Wednesday veterinarian on Friday or a master gardener, you can reach us over at midday at kcrg.com. And coming up for Monday, our learning expert will offer the best back to school strategies to stay on top of the start of the school year. Stay with your 24 hour news source, KCRG TV9. in need of skilled nursing or therapy. Bounce Back offers state-of-the-art equipment that is specifically designed for the older adults. Each piece, in combination with our expert Bounce Back team, private dining and spacious private suites, continues to make Bounce Back the premier choice for rehabilitation after surgery or illness. 
When you need a place to go, go to the experts at Windmill Manor to rehab, recover, and return home. It's the biggest sale of the year at Lemon Mattress Factory. Summer clearance, pillow tops, memory foam mattresses, latex hybrids, even adjustable beds. Get special summer clearance prices on nearly everything in the store. Queen pillow tops starting at only $2.99. Or get an incredible price on Lemon as a stereo pillow plush. A two-sided flippable mattress now only $4.99 with a free box spring, free local delivery, free setup, and a free bed frame. Don't miss the biggest sale of the year at Lemon Mattress Factory. You are invited to the newest steakhouse, Houston Rogers Steakhouse, inside the Long Branch Hotel. Enjoy responsibly sourced food prepared in a classic way with a modern touch. Tender, hand-cut steaks drizzled in herbed butter, creamy risotto, and pan-seared sea bass, all served with your choice of drinks. We give you only the best because that's what Harry believed in. Houston Rogers Steakhouse, located in the Long Branch Hotel. You spend time and money to keep your car clean and looking great. Why not your garage floor? You drive on it, walk on it, work on it, protect it. Iowa Garage Floors makes any cement surface more durable, attractive, and easy to clean. It's all in the prep work and pro-grade materials that you can't find in a can. Call Iowa Garage Floors today, 563-599-9838, 563-599-9838. Learn more about us on the web at iowagaragefloors.com. Hey, Cedar Rapids, Marcus here to tell you that Gander Outdoors is having its store-wide summer clearance event. Warehouse pricing on fishing, boating, hunting, shooting sports, biking, hiking, camping, and everything RV. With millions in inventory, all at warehouse pricing, we won't be undersold, and I guarantee it. Celebrate our freedom at the Gander Outdoors store-wide summer clearance event. Going on now in Cedar Rapids. Master Gardener on KCRG TV 9, sponsored by Culver's Garden Center and Greenhouse. And now a look of our top stories this midday. Arizona Senator John McCain has halted treatments for brain cancer. The 81-year-old has been away from the Capitol for treatment since December. Hawaii is already feeling the impacts of Hurricane Lane. Here is a live look at conditions on Diamond Head Beach in Honolulu. The Category 2 storm is already bringing 100 an hour winds, heavy rain and waves to the islands. And the rain has already moved tonight's kickoff of Friday Night Lights tonight. See, uh, tonight, Cedar Rapids Xavier will play Iowa City Regina. The game was supposed to start at 7.30. It's been moved up to 5 to try to beat the storms. You can catch the action live on KCRG 9.2. And be sure to catch all the highlights tonight on Friday Night Lights and zone after the KCRG TV 9 news at 10. And now, one final look of our weather. Justin, what do you got for us? Yeah, we're going to be seeing some scattered thunderstorms redevelop later on this evening, mainly after 6 o'clock. Now, some of the high school football games will be fine. Others are going to be affected by storms. I wish I could tell you which exactly ones are going to be, but I can't do that for you. So if you're heading out to the games, just be ready for that potential. Some of those storms this evening could be strong as well. Make sure you have the KCRG First Alert weather app so you get those weather alerts. This weekend, dry on Saturday, storm chances back on Sunday. Thanks, Justin. Don't forget to catch us at 5 and 6, and have a great weekend.